वेलकम टू तेलंगाना ओपन स्कूल सोसाइटी दिस इज साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी न्यू टेक्स्ट बुक इन दिस टेक्स्ट बुक वी हैव टोटल थर्टी थ्री चैप्टर्स इन दोज थर्टी थ्री चैप्टर्स द फर्स्ट चैप्टर इज मेजरमेंट्स इन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी वी नो द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ मेजरमेंट इन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर एग्जाम्पल in our day to day life we hear number of times regarding measurement for example 2 liters of milk 1 kg of rice 50 km of distance 3 liter of petrol like this early in the morning whenever whenever you wake up you see the watch what the time is now 7:30 8:30 like that all these are measurements but first of all what's the measurement what's the important role of measurement in our day to day life why do we need measurement we have to discuss in this chapter by end of this chapter you will learn different type of measurements and uh, different type of physical quantities like fundamental and derived quantities and their units and how the units are developed what is the need of si units and what are the different type of devices used to measure the length mass and so on like that physical quantities what is the appropriate instrument what is the appropriate instrument to for accurate measurement all these things we have to learn in this chapter okay now first of all what is measurement for example you have a, a piece of wood without any instrument can you say that the length of the wood piece of wood is it possible no not possible we can't say the length of the room width of the room or weight of a ball weight of a thing whatever it is we can't say without using an in, any instrument to measure the length we know that we are using scale to measure the mass or weight we are using balances to measure the time we are using watch clock to measure the speed we are using speedometer like this we have different instruments nothing but the instruments are known values known values they are calibrated in known values so now the unknown value unknown value is nothing but the length of the wood piece the length of the room these are unknown values now the unknown value values are compared with known values there is a measurement simply when the measurement involves a comparison between the unknown measurement and something known that we can refer to that is measurement okay very good why do we need a measurement why do we need a measurement why for example we will go to a go to a market to buy vegetable the person who are selling the vegetables give some vegetables to you without measuring are you accept or do you collect the piece of cloth from a cloth merchant is giving that cloth without any measurement are you accept no why maybe 
the cloth or the vegetable whatever it is maybe is it greater than what you required or less than what you required sometimes the loss occurs to you or loss occurs to the person what whatever it is happened that's why a particular measurement system is needed a particular measurement system is needed and a specific scales are required that's why we need a measurement okay now we will move to next point here we are discussing about measurement what is measurement and why do we need a measurement we will move to next topic physical quantities what is a physical quantity physical quantity is nothing but in surroundings what you measured in your surroundings all those are physical quantities in the summer we know that in the summer the temperature approximately reach to 45 46 degrees centigrade how do you measure the temperature by using thermometer that is quantified you measure the distance that is quantified for example sound it is also quantified heat it is also quantified electricity also quantified these are some physical quantities a physical quantity is nothing but it is a property of a material or system that can be quantified by measurement that is called physical quantity listen carefully a physical quantity is a property of a material or system that can be quantified by measurement these physical quantities are two types these physical quantities are two types one is fundamental or base physical quantity second one is derived quantities fundamental or base physical quantities second one derived physical quantities first one what are the fundamental physical quantities the set of quantities for fundamental importance from which all other possible quantities to be derived called fundamental quantities these are length mass time electric current thermodynamic temperature amount of substance luminous intensity these seven quantities are called fundamental quantities listen carefully all other possible quantities are derived from these quantities that's why these are called fundamental or base physical quantities total seven quantities are there in your textbook but i am writing here only three quantities length mass time along with these three physical quantities there are electric current thermodynamic temperature amount of substance luminous intensity along with these seven physical quantities fundamental quantities we have two more supplementary quantities are there one is plane angle and another one is solid angle now move to derived quantities all the physical quantities may be expressed in the terms of fundamental quantities that is they are derived from one or more physical quantities those are called derived quantities for example here we have take three derived quantities speed velocity time and etc here if you take speed 
is equal to distance by time. Distance by time. This is a derived quantity. It is derived from distance and time. Similarly, velocity. This velocity is equal to displacement by time. Displacement by time. This is also derived quantity. Nothing but derived quantities are derived from fundamental quantities. I hope you understand what is derived quantity. Now move to next slide. Unit. To understand the concept of unit, we have an activity. What is unit first of all? In the previous topic, we have discussed about the fundamental and derived quantities. Here we have the term unit. What is the unit? Unit means, to understand this, we have an activity. Here, we take four cylindrical shaped rulers named as A, B, C and D. First, now measure the length of A and D. Sorry, now measure the length of the A by using D. Similarly, measure the length of this B by using D and also measure the length of C by using D. Nothing but measure the lengths of A, B, C by using these D cylindrical ruler you will obtain some readings. After you are getting some readings, they are noted in a table. The table like that, how much the length of the ruler A, B, C with respect to D. Now repeat the activity. Measure the ruler length of A, B and D by using C. Listen carefully. In second situation, measure the length of the A, length of the B by using cylinder C. You obtain another two values. But if you compare these two tables, if you compare the tables, the length of the A in terms of D is not equal to length of the A in terms of C. Means, means the length of the A is different in terms of D to indifferent in terms of C. That means a standardized, standardized unit is required to measure the physical quantities. We will see. How did our ancestors make measurements, for example? Our ancestors are there. How did they measure? They didn't, they didn't know scale. They don't know measuring tape. How do they measure? Just imagine. Just take an activity. Measure any object surrounding you. Length of the any object. By using qubit. Qubit is nothing but the distance between length of an arm. Length of an arm is called qubit. Hand span is nothing but the distance between the tip of the thumb and tip of the little finger. 
foot span is nothing but the length of a foot digit is nothing but the width of a single finger width of a single finger this is digit and foot span and hand span cubit just you measure any length in your surrounding by using these hand spans or foot spans or cubit or digit you will get some values now ask your friend to measure the same length by using his hand span or his foot span or his digit or his cubit how the values getting by you and your friend are they are same are they same no no not at all why because there is something different in the hand span of you and your friend that's why you get different values that is not a standardized unit hand span and cubit foot span digit these are not standardized units standardized units nothing but anybody can measure the length of that particular object will come same that is a standardized unit that's why we need a standardized unit after some time around 1790 a modern measurement system is introduced a modern measurement system is introduced after french revolution the french scientist took lead in establishing a new system of weights and measures this lead to the birth of metric system which is like a hindu arabic counting system based on the multiples of divisions and subdivisions after detailed consideration the basic unit of length mass and time were defined and their working standards were prepared the working standard for meter was prepared on a platinum meridian bar by making two lines a meter apart similarly platinum iridium cylinder was made equal to the mass of 1 cubic decimic water as the working standard for mass these two standards were preserved at the international bureau of weights and measures at paris the copies of these two were prepared and sent to different countries in the meanwhile number of systems were developed but two systems which were widely used were cgs and mks systems the units for the units for length mass and time are centimeter gram second in cgs system meter kilogram second in mks system observe carefully in cgs system unit for length is centimeter unit for mass is gram unit for time is second in mks system unit for length is meter unit for mass is kilogram unit for time is second these are modern measurement system many systems are came across the uh, after 1790 french revolution but in those systems these are two these two systems are very familiar after 1958 around 1958 a new system was developed by cgpm cgpm is nothing but a cgpm general conference on weights and measures it introduced a new system that is called system of internationals system of internationals 
it was realized that the units defined as standard to be redefined. 1960, the new exercise of redefining the system of units led to birth of SI units. It was adopt, adopted in 11th General Conference of CGPM. The SI consists system of units for use in all aspects of life including international trade, manufacturing, health and safety, protection of environment in the basic science. These SI units are two types simply for fundamental quantities we use fundamental units for derived quantities we use derived units these are two types SI units are two types one is fundamental or base units second one is derived units That's all. now first of all we have to learn about fundamental or base units already we know that there are total seven number of fundamental quantities or base quantities they are length mass time electric current thermodynamic temperature amount of substance luminous intensity for the typical symbol typical symbol or typical symbol for length it is written as l x r etc mass is represented by m time is denoted by t electric current is denoted by i thermodynamic temperature is denoted by capital t amount of substance is denoted by capital n luminous intensity is denoted by iv basic unit name in the SI units length is measured in meter its symbol m mass is measured in kilogram its symbol kg Time is measured in second, it is symbol S. Electric current is measured in ampere, symbol A. Thermodynamic temperature measured in terms of Kelvin, it's symbol capital K. Amount of substance, it is measured in mole and symbol MOL. Luminous intensity, it is measured in terms of candela. It is denoted by CD. These are seven fundamental units. Units of fundamental quantities are called fundamental units. These are total seven. This is a table. Now, derived units. We have all other than fundamental quantities, all other quantities are derived units. Except these seven quantities, all other quantities, whatever they are, those are called derived quantities. In those derived quantities, we take some of the examples only. Here, derived, derived units, we take area. Area is nothing but we know that length into length. Area of a rectangle, if we take area of rectangle, length into breadth. Breadth is nothing but it is also a type of length. That's why area is equal to length into length. Length into length is nothing meter into meter. That is meter square is a square meter. Value length into breadth into height. Here breadth and height both are in terms of if we take in length in terms of length. Then meter into meter into meter that is meter cube that is cubic meter. Speed and velocity. Speed is nothing but length by time, distance by time, that is meter per second, m by s. Density, mass by length cube, that is kilogram per meter cube, cubic meter, that is kg by meter cube. These are some examples of derived units. We can derive the units of derived quantities by using fundamental units. To this, first of all, we will must write the formula for the derived quantity. After writing the derived quantity formula, we will 
derive the units from that. Measurement of length. In your day-to-day -day situations, we observe many measurements of lengths. In general, breadth, distance, displacement, height, all are some kind, same kind of length. To measure length, we have many devices <coughs> like centimeter scale, meter scale, plane tape, rolled tape. For measuring small distances, nothing but small thickness, we have uh, device like vernier calipers and screw gauge we will learn in further classes. In these some of the devices, we are used to measure short distances like this, uh, length table, length of a table, breadth of classroom, etc. These are measured by centimeter scale or rolling tape. Already we know that SI units for length is meter but in our surroundings for example a distance between two villages can't be measured in meters we we'll must express in kilometers the length of a blackboard either it will be expressed in terms of meters and centimeters but we can't express it is in kilometers that's why we need more units. Here we have some units are here examples. 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter. We know that. Similarly, 1 centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter. 1 meter is equal to 1000 millimeter. 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meters. 1 meter is equal to 10 to the power of minus 3 kilometers. And 1 centimeter is equal to 10 to the power of minus 2 meters. These are some of the examples, some of the units. But when we are using a device, we must know about its working principle and its least count. What is meant by least count? Least count is nothing but the smallest value that can be measured by the measuring instrument is called its least count. For example, a centimeter scale. By using the centimeter scale, we will take the smallest value by using the centimeter scale is 1 millimeter. That's why the least count of the centimeter scale is 1 millimeter. Similarly, whatever you observe, observe in your daily life, the watch or wall clock, the least time taken by that clock is 1 second. That's why that is the least count of the clock. Least count is nothing but the smallest value that can be measured by the measuring instrument. The measured values are good only up to this value. We can't measure beyond that least count. Okay, these are least count of device. When we are using any device, we will initially we will must know the least count of the device. Okay. And also we will must know the usage of working principle of that device. Okay. Here just we have an activity. How do we use the centimeter scale or inch scale? This is, uh, I hope this is observed in your uh, compost box. Okay, it's a small scale. It's a centimeter and millimeters on this side, on the edge of, uh, you observe here, this is a centimeter and millimeters. It's calibrated into centimeter and millimeter. Here, uh, one centimeter is nothing but this is the one centimeter. 
और जीरो टू वन दिस वन सेंटीमीटर वन टू टू दिस वन सेंटीमीटर टू टू थ्री दिस वन सेंटीमीटर एंड दिस जीरो टू वन इज फर्दरली कैलिब्रेटेड इन टू टेन डिविजन दीज आर मिलीमीटर्स ओके ऑन द अदर साइड ऑफ स्केल हियर वी हैव जीरो टू ट्वेल्व कैलिब्रेशन दीज आर इंचेस inches this is nothing but this is a 140 this scale is, has 1 feet 1 feet 0 to 12 that 1 feet divided by 1 feet divided into 12 inches this is called 1 inch 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 these are inches the centimeter scale has two edges in these two edges we have one side centimeter and millimeter and another side in inches is calibrated in inches okay scale may have beveled edge not a sharp edge it is a beveled edge why it is a beveled edge to avoid errors due to parallax error we have to take the readings by using this scale without any parallax error then what is parallax error we will discuss now observe you here three persons observe a reading a b c there are three persons those three persons observing observing the same reading but what happen observe carefully the person correct person correct position of the i is b which is vertically above the end where the reading is to be taken observe carefully here the person b the person b nothing but this girl exactly vertically she observe vertically where the reading is taken but these two persons they are not vertically that means they are not take correct values they have some error the type of error is called parallax error whatever you whatever you taken readings you will must take the readings without any parallax error this is parallax error you will observe you have to take any reading without any parallax error that means you observe that reading vertically above where you have to take reading okay now precautions while using meter scale or centimeter scale whenever you use that centimeter scale or meter scale you have to follow some precautions what the precautions you have to be taken while using the meter scale here first one the scale should be placed exactly along the length of to be measured zero point on the scale should coincide with the starting point of the length to be measured our high must be vertically above the point of coincidence of scale where the measurement is to be taken that is nothing but without you have to take the reading without any parallax error ensure that the end of the scale are not worn out measure the length of an object more than two times and take the average of three measurements for accuracy why the observe the last point measure the length of an object more than two times more than two times why nothing only just if we take if we make some reading make some value up to some value you may take some error that's why if you take two or more times the error will be minimized you will get an accurate value after taking two or more times that's why whenever wherever wherever you take the readings you will repeat the experiment two or three times okay these are the precautions while using a meter scale okay we have an activity to find the length and breadth of the table using meter scale 
टेक्स्ट बुक देर इज ए एक्टिविटी ऑलरेडी जस्ट बिफोर वी ऑब्जर्व हाउ डू यूज मीटर स्केल वॉट आर द प्रिकॉशंस वेल यू टेकिंग द रीडिंग्स बाई यूजिंग दट स्केल यू हैव टू फाइंड द लेंथ एंड ब्रेथ ऑफ द टेबल आई होप देर इज ए टेबल इन यूअर होम आर इन यूअर सराउंडिंग इफ देर इज नो टेबल यू हैव टू मेजर द लेंथ ऑफ द रूम ब्रेथ ऑफ द रूम बाई यूजिंग दट मीटर स्केल आर द सेंटीमीटर स्केल दिस इज एक्टिविटी फोर एंड रिकॉर्ड द ऑब्जर्वेशन इन यूअर नोटबुक दट्स आल ओके now the length and breadth is in linear shape you will using meter scale but if how do you find the length of a curved path that is our activity 5 to measure the length of the curved path first of all, first of all we have to take a thread cotton thread now tie a knot with cotton thread at the first point a and move the cotton thread along the points b c d and g when the thread reaches the extreme end of the curved path cut it at the point nothing but cut it at the point e remove the thread from a and then place it along a straight length a meter scale and now measure its length the length of the thread is the measure of the length of the curved path this is an activity you will must conduct this activity at your home or at your classroom it's a very simple activity okay these are all measurement of length how do we take measurements of length okay now measurement of mass and measurement of weight another one what is mass first of all mass is nothing but it is a measure of the amount of matter contained in object is called mass every object contained with some particles the total entire mass of the system is nothing but the total sum of the particles that is measurable that is mass mass can be measured by using palm balance or table balance only okay this mass is measured in terms of kilograms according to si units but already we know that we need some more units to measure the mass those are gram milligram quintal we know that already 1 kg is equal to 1000 gram in your day, day to day life you hear all these words i think quintal a uh, quintal of rice a ton of One ton, two ton. The capacity of the truck is ten, ten ton, twenty ton, thirty ton, like that. I hope all you hear these words in your day-to-day -day life. That one kg is equal here. The relation between those uh, units are one kg is equal thousand gram, one gram is equal thousand milligram, one quinta is equal to hundred kgs, one ton is equal to thousand kgs. That is equal to ten quinta, and One gram is equal to 10 to the power of minus 3 kg. One milligram is equal to 10 to the power of minus 3 grams. This is a measurement of mass. Similarly, measurement of weight. There is a small difference between mass and weight. What is the main difference? Is nothing but weight is nothing but weight is gravitational force on your body that weight is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity you will clearly learn about weight in gravitation chapter in this class only you have to learn this weight is measured by using spring balance and electronic balance and compartment balance platform balance 
like that. Okay, here weight is nothing but a gravitational force. We know that on each and every object there is a gravitational force. Okay, if you take on the earth, that weight is equal to mass m into acceleration due to gravity g. That w is equal to m into g. Okay, it is a derived quantity. Mass is a fundamental quantity, but weight is a derived quantity. There are small difference between these two. Mass is constant at any universe. Wherever you take the mass of the body, in the entire universe, it is constant. But weight is variable. How it, var how it varies? It varies along with acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is different from different places. For example, on the earth, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square average. On moon, it is 1.67 meter per second square. On sun, it is around 27.3 meter per second square. There is nothing but acceleration due to gravity changes from place to place. That's why weight of the body is not constant in the entire university. It's the main difference. Mass is constant, but whereas weight is not a constant value. It's the main difference between mass and weight. Now, we will move to next topic that is measurement of time. Time is the interval between two events. It's nothing but if there are two events if you take two digits like this the span between the interval between the two events is called time. In everyday practice, we have 12 hour clock system and also we have 24 hour clock system. You can observe the 24 hour clock system in railway stations. But in our day to day life, in our houses, we are using 12 hour clock system. Okay, the time can be measured. According to SI units, time as SI units second. But not only second, we are using many units like minute, hour, day, week, year. All these are units for time. We know that one minute is equal to 60 second. Similarly, one hour is equal to 60 minute. That is equal to 3600 second. One day is equal to 24 hour. That is equal to 86,400 second. One day is nothing but 24 hour. That is equal to 86,400 second. Similarly, one week is equal to 7 days. One month is approximately equal to some 30 or 31 days. And one year is equal to 365 days. These are the units for the time and the relation between them. Okay. Now, these time can be measured by using stopwatch. Pendulum clock, digital clock, sand dial, sundial. These are the some examples to measure the time. To measure the accurate time, we are using atomic clock. Atomic clock. In olden days, our ancestors using these sundial. Okay. Uh, and also now nowadays we can observe most probably these digital clocks. Okay, these are different operators to be uh, to be used to measure the time. In these, we have to know about the stopwatch. A stopwatch, a stopwatch is used to measure the time interval of an event. It is a kind of watch that stands due out for the accuracy and precision with which it can measure the time of an event. It works by pressing a start button and then stopping. Here, the button is here, is the start button and also it is a stop button. Okay. 
if you these stopwatches are two types again one is analog and one is digital uh, the digital and analog both have the same button for stop and start okay the difference is only it is a mechanical and that is completely digital uh, that has a digital numbers those are same working in the working principle both are same but the accuracy of the digital stopwatch is more than the analog stopwatch that is the main difference between these two and accuracy list count is also different from different for digital and analog uh, for a digital stopwatch it is around 0.01 second for analog it is up to 0.1 second this is the main difference between digital and analog uh, stopwatches okay these are measurement of time now the last topic in our chapter that is measurement of value okay <clears throat> Uh, I think you bring or your parents bring from a shop two liters of milk, one liter of milk, half liter of milk. Okay, you pour the petrol or diesel in your vehicles like two liters, three liters, four liters. Okay, you have you have a water tank or water drum or a bubble water bubble bucket. These are some capacities. Okay liter milliliter and meter cube centimeter these are some units okay volume is a derived quantity that volume is nothing but length into length into length that's why it's it's units meter cube si units meter cube okay here the relation between these two 1 liter is equal to 1000 milliliters 1 meter cube is equal to 10 to the power of 6 centimeter cube 1000 cubic centimeter is equal to 1 liter to measure the volume of liquids only to measure the volume of liquids we are using measuring jar the measuring jar has uh, calibrations from bottom to top okay and uh, whenever you pour the liquid into this uh, measuring jar up to which level the liquid will be filled and you observe the reading and that is the volume of the liquid it is observed by shopkeepers in shops and petrol banks wherever you observe this now by using this measuring jar we can also find the volume of irregular solid object for example if you take a cube cube is nothing but is a regular object the volume of the cube is length into length into length it can easily uh, we can obtain the value by measuring that length of the cube cubic length into breadth into height but if you take a stone a stone that is irregular object how do you find the volume of that stone okay for finding the volume of that irregular object that stone we have to use this measuring jar how do we use we will see now okay measurement of volume of irregular solids using a measuring cylinder for this take a measuring cylinder and fill almost half of its half of it with water require the volume of water let us assume a just observe here take a cylinder cylindrical jar or measuring jar pour the half of the water more than half of the water nothing to worry okay here observe the re reading okay this is approximately a centimeter cube or a milliliter now tie a small irregular solid that is which is not dissolvable which is not dissolved in the water with a fine cotton thread 
put the solid gently into the water in the cylinder so that it is completely immersed in water. Okay, now what changes do you observe? Here we can easily observe that the level of the water increases. The level of the water increases. Now, record the value or observe the value where the water level to be raised. It is B, milliliter. Okay, without stone or that without solid body, the level of the water is A milliliter. And after immerse the stone, the level of the water is B. Okay, now subtract the A from B, that is nothing but B minus A gives us the volume of the solid body. This is the volume of the solid body. Here, this is our chapter completely. In our chapter completely, we are what we observed in this chapter. We observed what is measurement, how do, how do we take measurement, what are the physical quantity, how many types of physical quantities are there, what are the units, how we, how we differentiate the units and what's the modern measurement system and measurement of length, measurement of time, measurement of mass, measurement of value. All these learnt in this chapter. Okay, now we have a progress. Practice for learning outcomes. We have yeah, some questions in the uh, at the end of our chapter in your textbook there are practice for learning outcomes observe those questions and answer the questions first question what is the importance of measurement in our day to day life and second question how units plays important role in trading give examples without units we can't do anything we know that already give some examples for that write precautions while using meter scale explain parallax error how do you minimize parallax error while take readings? How do you find length and breadth of a table by using meter scale? Explain the working principle of digital stopwatch. Assume and write what will happen if there is no systems of a system of measurement. Explain the procedure in the experiment to find the volume of irregular body. All these are simple questions. Wow. Once thoroughly observe the book, you will uh, you will get answers from your book. This is a very very simple, and we have only four multiple choice questions. One hour is equal to there are sixty second, that six hundred second, that six hundred minute, and thirty minute. We know that already. This number of base quantities we have total seven number of base quantities, including there is uh, two. Uh, supplementary quantities are there but those are not base quantities that's why we have our answer is for second question c only not b we have only seven base base quantities or fundamental quantities okay choose derived quantity from the following length mass time speed length mass time these are fundamental quantities that's why speed is the derived quantity which of the following device is used to measure the weight just go through the book and answer these questions. It's very uh, simple topic and it's very, very important to our day-to-day -day life. That's why all of you will must learn about the uh, measurement. Thank you. Bhaskar Desh. Thank you.